Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Showtime Doctor. Yes, it's finally happening. I'm making a rune guide. Uh, I've held off, off on this for a couple reasons. Number one, I didn't know, and I still don't know everything, but I know a lot more now than I did. Unfortunately, I can't give you the content I want to give you because there is a... Uh, I wish there was a way I could look it up. I really can't. Well, anyways, sometimes if you're lucky, there's a knight, or excuse me, a rune selector ticket. Uh, you'll get as like a bonus or maybe a quest reward. I don't remember what it was from, but it perfectly had like all of the runes. And it would say like on rune one, you have a chance of getting attack, attack speed, uh, accuracy, crit chance, etc., etc. And there were only certain slots for certain things. So like evasion can only spawn on three slots. Uh, I think attack speed is similar, et cetera, et cetera. And so I wanted to share that with you, but at the time I wasn't really doing my videos uh, in a consistent manner. So it's my fault I potatoed that because it was only in the mailbox for seven days. And I was trying to trying to figure out the type of content and guide. Because for those who don't know, I don't watch other people's guides on the game for the most part. And it's not because I'm like, oh, I'm so much better. No, I don't want to copy people. I want to bring you an organic experience from what I see because I'm bringing you the experience of basically an average player to the game that is really invested in the game. I'm not super spending tons of money on the game. I spend a little bit, but I'm not spending a bunch of money. Uh, by a little bit, it's been like $30. And a lot of that was donated to me in my Twitch. So I'm not really spending that much money. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, God. What was the point I was making? Scatterbrain. Well, anyways, yeah, organically experiencing. So that's why, like, my guides... I can't clear every dungeon. Like when Xenon comes back, Xenon's coming back in two days. I've never cleared Xenon. I've never cleared Sid. I've never cleared Kali. Granted, most of us have never clear cleared Kali or Sid. I can only tell you what I've personally done. And, you know, people give me tips and stuff, but I don't want to be like exact copies of someone else's video and like, you know, copy everything they say and then just add my own thing to it. Like, I'm not that type of person. So. And unfortunately, anyone who knows, like if you're like a magazine article writer and you start reading another guy's articles and he does similar content to you, you're going to pick up things and be like, and you're going to start copying things just unconsciously. I don't like doing that. So it's nothing against anyone else. I just don't like. And, you know, I can still watch like one or two videos and be fine, but I just don't like doing like rune guides and stuff. So this is going to be uh, my rune guide. So number one. Your rune box when you start the game is 100. Uh, if you got the half off rune event like we do now, and you got a decent hero lineup, I, I highly, highly suggest max it to 500. Okay, it's a pain. I know it costs a lot of crystals, and it, it's a pain to go through 500 runes, or at least the majority of them not being used. But, you know, number one, it's really going to make your... Uh, it's really going to make your team better, you know, get going through the runes and finding the optimal runes. And number two, you're not going to have to reset the rune dungeon auto farm as much because it's going to auto farm. Then you could be like, okay, you know, sell all one, two, three, four, five slot runes, five star runes rather, etc. But uh, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. So let me just start here. So number one. You go to your runes, say you want to manage. Actually, even before we get the characters, let's do this. We'll go to salvage runes first. So salvaging runes, like I said, as you can see here, I got 437 out of 500 runes. A gigantic pain in the ass to go through. Like, really, it's annoying. Now, luckily, we can click on one, two, three, four, and five stars and just get rid of them right here. But... The main problem with this, you might have seen it in my other video I posted today. I don't like that I can't just like hover over a rune and see, you know, okay, this rune has these stats. And this rune has these stats. And this rune, like, I always have to hold the left mouse button for a second or half a second, whatever it is. 
That's annoying. Please, no marble. Let us just hover over it and be done with it. And then likewise, it would be cool too if I could lock it without having to go into here. Like if I could just left click, or excuse me, right click lock, because right click right now is not really being used for anything. So that would be cool, but as it is, like, when you get a bunch of new runes, it'll say new. And then you go through, and you're like, okay, I gotta look at this. Okay, I'll keep that one. Okay, I gotta look at this. Okay, maybe I'll keep that one. Okay, I really like this one, so I'm gonna lock it. Locking your runes makes it so that you can't salvage or sell them. Even if you hit 6 star, which, by the way, never hit this. I honestly wish I could hide that. <laughs> So that would be a nightmare if you sold all your six stars. But anyway, so... And you could come down here, you can go through your runes, you could lock them. You know, unlock them. Do what you want, depending on what set you have. And then most people overlook this, you can sort by grade, greater than, less than. You could sort by enhance, so obviously all the runes that you've enhanced, you can sort by that. And then you could sort by set, so if you want to see a particular set, you know, look at them for all the different slots and stuff. Now, the way that runes work, this is your slot 6, your slot 5, your slot 4, etc. And then over here is the Omni slot, so it has every slot. So depending on what you're doing, it could be really helpful. But, so then you're, you, you might say, uh... Well, Showtime Doctor, I got this really great rune, but I want to transform it because it's in the wrong slot. <sighs> Number one, there's a couple rules about transforming runes. The number one thing about runes is... You're going to get a random rune of the same type and the same uh, star number. When I say same type, I mean a rune of agility. So in this case, as triple HP increase, I might get a red rune that increases attack instead of defense for the primary stat. And it's going to have a totally different substats. And I know some people, I'll get more into it later, but I know some people that try to do specific things. In fact, you know what, let me come back to transform. It'll make more sense. Cell runes I don't recommend unless you're like short. 100 gold of something and you've absolutely expended all your energy and you can't get gold But anyways, okay, so let's look at my size rune. So This is how the runes work Your first two runes over here all of your runes have primary stats and substats So your first two runes that are red the primary stats always going to be attack So every time you upgrade the rune which I'll get into later It'll upgrade the primary stat. You always, almost always want six star runes instead of five star runes because six star runes primary stats. In fact, I'll show you because I still have a five star rune on one character. I just forget who. There it was. Okay, so literally I got this five star rune because I have double crit damage on Esna, which is really good in attack speed. And I can't find a better rune. But. If you notice, when I try to enhance this, uh, i got to click on it. You see how the right there on the primary stat, ignore everything else, on the primary stat it says 3 to 7. Well, if I'm going to upgrade a 6 star rune, 7 to 15. So every time I upgrade it, it's getting at least 7 points versus that's the max it can get on a 5 star rune. So you quickly see, you know, this one has 78 attack, this one has 170 attack. So, you can keep a 5-star rune, but you have to make sure that A, it has some badass substats, like in this case this one does. Or B, you just really need it because it's a rare rune, and you need it for the set bonus or something like that. That's the only reason I can see keeping a 5-star. But, uh, let me go back to my Saya, though. Okay, so... And then your primary stat on your two blue runes is defense. Your primary stat on your green runes is HP. So always keep the primary stats in mind because as you upgrade them, you're going to be thinking of the substats. But remember, you're upgrading your primary stat too. So the number two thing to know about runes, uh, substats. 
So in this case, Saya is a character that on her alt, it ignores defense, and it hits really hard. So in Saya's case, you want her to have as much crit strike chance and attack percentage as possible, because she's a hard hitter. So obviously, every rune is going to have a set, and it'll tell you right here, the rune of assault set, 5% additional crit chance. And likewise, the Rune of Rage set is a 4 set, so it takes 4 to complete the set, and then you get this bonus. When I was a new player, I thought that every rune gave you this bonus. I didn't know that it was a set bonus. So, that was a new mistake on my part. But, so you're going to have to kind of keep in mind, you know, sets, which sets you want for certain characters. So, for instance, when I go to my Esna... Well, in her case, she has a passive that basically makes it so that when she gets hit, there's a 50% chance she's going to crit with her next attack. So in her case, I don't need crit strike chance, so I chose to amp her crit damage. As you can see, crit damage whenever I get a chance. It's actually hard to find crit damage runes. That's the other thing, but I got a little bit of crit damage. She actually doesn't need crit chance, but... I'll go into the different slots later. She could be ruined better. But don't worry about it for right now. So <clears throat> now the other thing about runes is you can upgrade them. And when you upgrade them, it takes basically the fodder that you get from salvaging runes. So this currency right here, you get it sometimes for like rewards or drops or whatever. It'll kind of give you the uh, the breakdown on the help thing here, but so pretty much as you're uh, salvaging runes, you're getting the currency, and you use that currency plus gold to actually upgrade runes. So in this case, if I was going to enhance this rune, there's the currency right there, and there's the gold cost it's going to cost, and here's the percent chance that it's going to be a success. So. Most characters, if you're just starting out with them, like you're starting to use them, get their runes to plus six. In general, if you have some fodder, uh, in my case, I don't have a lot of fodder, so I can't really show you too much. But if you have a lot of fodder, you know, you can uh, get it get it there fairly cheap. It's going to be like maybe a couple thousand to get a plus six rune when you uh, factor into account failure chance etc now on the note of failure chance <laughs> by the way you notice that the majority of my runes are bonus of 12 because for whatever reason that marble decided the enhance rate uh once you get the 12 15 is the max you can upgrade a rune uh 15 percent to get a rune to plus 13 is kind of garbage so I don't, I don't for the most part i don't do anything beyond plus 12. So, but as you'll see, like lower runes, let me find some different characters with lower runes. Oh, uh, there was one. So you see when you enchant this, you know, low 100%, only costs 90, very little gold, so pretty easy, right? In fact, I just switched that rune on her, actually. <laughs> But so, another thing to know about rune, rune upgrading, every three, I wonder if there's a way I could show you, here we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every three upgrades on a rune, you are going to increase the substats chance, and it's going to be from this percentage to this percentage. So in this case, I guess I could go for this and see. You see the substats here, there's HP, and then there's... Uh, Apparently they're giving us bonus stamina, nice. Uh, counter attack. So every three levels, you you will be able to upgrade your uh, substats as well as your primary stats. Every level you upgrade your primary stat, but every three levels you upgrade your substats. So keep that in mind when you're going for upgrades. Uh, you know, be sure to, yeah, that you're stopping on three, six, nine, and twelve, depending on how invested you are in your character. But like in this case, I'll just blow it for the hell of it, even though I'm probably not going to get it. <clears throat> so in that case, it's a failure. You got a chance to retry. And retry again. You didn't have enough materials, so I got screwed on that one. But eventually it would succeed, and 
uh, these substats would upgrade along with the regular stats. So. And then so, I think I've pretty much covered everything. Oh, no, 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 I haven't. So you might have Vire's Remorse on a rune and decide, hey, I'm going to get rid of a rune. Uh, instead of this rune, I want to put on this rune now. Well, when you do that, it's going to show you both runes here. If it's locked, it's going to prompt you to unlock it. You can just do that right here. Now, if you equip it, I got to click it here. It'll destroy the old rune, so you're not going to have the rune. So if you want to keep the rune, then you click on the rune here and you hit remove. That's going to cost you a little bit of gold. So it's up to you. Uh, usually it's worth it to keep good runes, obviously. You can just slot it on another character if you find something that's a better fit for a certain character. Or you're changing rune types or whatever. Rune set bonuses. There's all types of set bonuses, by the way. Uh, attack speed increase, multi strike, there's attack percentage, crit strike chance, crit strike damage. On my Rue, I got looming death, obviously. HP increase, defense increase. What I recommend on, for people that have tankier characters, because I know most of you, you go between defense and HP increase. Get all defense. Get all defense. Don't get HP increase. And you'll be like, but Showtime Doctor, I want a big health pool. The reason I say get all defense is because you need that mitigation from your stat bonuses. In fact, honestly, I'm, you know, I haven't even changed my runes out on Rue. I'm probably going to get her more defense. But, you know, depending on your substats, if you got, like, defense runes and they have garbage substats, hey, put some HP on. You know, it's cool. But the reason I say that is you can get HP on substats, HP increase or HP recovery, whatever floats your boat. You cannot get defense on your substats. So consider that, and you're going to be like, well, but Showtime, there's a lot of uh, ignore armor in this game. That's true. But depending on the character, most of the attacks in this game don't ignore armor. Like, I can name off the top of my head. You know, there's some people that have passives where they ignore armor, but I can name off the top of my head like five characters, maybe. Maybe three, honestly. There's Sias and Claire. Who else has ignored defense? I know there's a couple others. But you get what I'm saying. There's not that much ignore defense in the game. So really, you should probably get mitigation. Uh, so consider that, you know, it's your, it's your account. Do what you want if you want bigger health pools. But I'm saying you can get substats with HP increase. So there's a consideration for you. Um, what else? Defense increase. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, you know, well, but Showtime Doctor, I want plus 15 runes. If you're willing to kiss like 30 million gold away, go for it, bros. There's a video I'll recommend it. In fact, I'll probably post it in the link notes. I just got to go find it. I haven't even watched it, I've just heard him describe it. Mascarian, uh, another brilliant uh, YouTube guy who posts content on this game and also a Twitch streamer. He did a video where uh, he's like, how much gold does it take to get plus 15 runes? Like, all plus 15 runes for one character. And I forget what the total was, but it was something ridiculous. Like, 30 million gold or something like that. It is not worth it. It's worth it if you're willing to make that investment. But in general, for most of us, free-to-play, freemium. Free-to-play with a little bit of, you know whaling sardining whatever you want to call it, it is not worth it so don't even bother my opinion get your runes to 12 and be happy for most of your characters so and it sucks i'm hoping that net marble that's a that's one thing i forgot to freaking say in my last video okay so if you watch my last video of things i want hey net marble so when we decide that we're gonna upgrade runes and we only have a 15 percent chance at 12 Give us some hot times. Give us an item. Give us something that it'll it'll pop an additional 20% for like an hour or something like that for upgrading runes. Or give us a hot time where it's like, okay, on Sundays or whatever, hours, whatever, 20%, you know, bonus enchant rate. That would go so far with the community on making sure that uh, free-to-play players could get runes that were plus 15 without dumping an obnoxious amount of gold into it and i understand you know netmarble rng and 
you know that but it would be so nice if there was something you could do for that because rates like this when you get to like plus oh i think i have a 13 rune because i made the mistake on kane yeah 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 look at this garbage once you get a rune to 13 10 percent so i'm guessing 14 is 5 percent 15 actually never mind it would be 14 to 15 is probably 5 percent that, that's ridiculous for like a cost of you know all that that's ridiculous so I'm just saying. Anyways. So then the thing I was talking about earlier with the transform rooms. I only recommend you transform rooms if A, you have a very rare rune, like one of these. You know, rune of resolve, rune of gasp. Uh, I got some runes of burst. I rerolled this one into triple attack, so I'm going to put that on somebody. Rune of burst, if you don't know. 20% additional damage if someone has a dot on them. Goes really good on Ashley, fairly good on Morrigan, or anyone that can that does dots, or if you run a team that keeps up a lot of dots. Super good. I probably need to re-roll this one, but, you know, the cost for that right now is a little high, so I'm going to have to think about it. But, you know, when you get a six-star of a really rare rune, or you got, like, a really high rune, maybe, but when you re-roll a really high rune, I think it takes it back down to plus zero. So keep that in mind. And then also, if you have, like, you know, it's your choice what you want to do, but don't, do not try to reroll for, like, a slot 5 rune. That's another thing I need to go into. I'll go into that in a second. Uh, because it's not happening, partner. I watched one of my friends, Sheik, I watched her do it for, like, until she ran out of materials. It's not worth it for the chance. It just isn't. You might get lucky, you know, but in most cases, you're not going to. So then another thing with runes, uh, as you do the rune dungeon, and rune dungeon's half off, I highly recommend you guys do that rune dungeon when it's half off. But if you'll notice, my rune ratio here, my slot 6 has tons of runes. Slot 6 is a heavy offensive category, so it has mostly offensive stats. Uh, stats rather. Slot 5, I don't have too many, I'll get into that later. 4, I got a lot. 3, 2, 1. You know, I got a decent amount, but... One, two, and five are really hard to get. They seem to drop the least. Slot six drops the most, and then four and three drop at a decent rate usually. Or excuse me, four drops at a decent rate usually. Three is just in, in the middle. So if you guys notice, there are certain stats that can only go on certain slots. So I'll just skip to this one. Slot 5 is horrible, okay? Slot 5 is like the worst slot in the game as far as rune slots go, so watch. I won't even say anything, look at these slots. Like, this rune right here is actually a godly slot 5 rune, just because it has two semi-useful stats. This one, HP recovery, HP recovery, HP accuracy, HP recovery, I sense... I hope you're starting to see the trend here. Okay. That is another godlike rune because it has two out of three stats that were decent. If you get three slot stats that are decent on this, but accuracy for the most part, in case you guys don't know, you generally do not want to uh, have your sub stats for. So you get the idea. For whatever reason, they need to tune this. There is an unusual amount of HP recovery and accuracy that drops on this slot. It's rare enough to get a slot 5 rune in general. Like, I don't even know why I plus those. That must have been early game. But it's ridiculous. And it's funny because I was looking on the knight or the rune selector ticket. I can't believe I said that again. I've never even bought a knight selector. Anyways, uh, it said that on slot 5... Accuracy has a chance to spawn. HP recovery has a chance to spawn, but there's also counter, evade, attack. And I forget, I think there's like one or two more. But for whatever reason, it's always accuracy and HP recovery. Always. Like, you cannot escape the damn stat, dude. On like every rune, there's always at least one. And most likely there's two, and oftentimes there's three. And it's just like... You can't win with this slot. Like, literally, slot 5 is like the dump slot. Like, you do it, 
if you're lucky, you have two out of three stats that are decent. Because HP recovery and PvP, that's instant death. Well, not instant death, but it's hard to fight Kane with that. And But it's decent in PvE. But then accuracy, there's almost no reason for accuracy in the game. Because you can get heroes that buff your accuracy. If you really need accuracy. So you just bring that hero along. You don't need the, you don't need the rune. You always want to rune for damage or life or whatever you're going for on certain builds, on certain characters, you know, so. Slot 5 is atrocious, so. Hopefully that'll be tuned at some point and fixed, but. Ugh. Anyways, but yeah, like, like I was saying, only transform, like, super rare runes that you got at 6 star. That for whatever reason, you might not have rolled the substats. Like this one, I should really redo if I'm ever going to take this one again. Oh, that's funny, I didn't even know there was a resolve one. I think I just got this one randomly. From a drop or whatever. A rune ticket. Uh, but anyways. And then, you really got to think, guys, on your characters. Because if you think about it and you're free to play, you only have so much time and so much like stamp pots and stuff to farm runes. And as I was, I was listening to a top player tell me, he's like, if you're not willing to invest thousands of dollars in your runes, which obviously I'm not, and I'm sure most of you watching this video are not, you're never going to have perfect runes, okay? And you got to come to peace with that. So honestly, you're going to get some godly runes, like triple attack runes. Attack speed is godly. If you get attack speed on anything, attack speed is one of the best stats in the game. If not the best, for the most part. But you really got to think your characters through. So like Saya, for instance, like I told you earlier. She ignores defense, but she needs help critting. Get her crit chance, get her attack percentage. This girl right here, if you read all her skills, Morgan. Attack percentage. Attack percentage. Come over here. Uh, well, that's a different thing. Come over here. Attack percentage. Her bleed takes. Attack percentage. Same thing. Attack percentage on her skills. Attack percentage. So, her, obviously, I went attack, and then I actually went defense on her because she's a little squishy. Now, you can argue with, like, a guy like Tayo, right? Because the way that his passive works. I actually did multi-strike with him. Multi-strike and HP. And I know guys that do attack speed with him. I know people that do straight attack percentage with him. And like, well, why'd you do multi with him, Showtime? Because 50% additional damage upon multi-strike. <laughs> That's good enough, but the stacking buff increases his crit chance. So the more he's hitting, the more it's stacking. And with every stacking buff right here, because you're thinking, oh, well, maybe you want crit chance. Then no, you do not want crit chance with him because... His one deals additional damage for every hot-blooded instinct stack. So if you can stack it three times, that's 75% additional damage. If you get that to skill six, that's 40% additional damage on his one. And then this decreases his multi when you use it, but it buffs your team. So, you know, it's just different builds, different skill things. And, you know, depending on the character and their skill set. So like this girl... She has a 50% chance to gain, gain a buff that makes her crit 100% of the time. So you don't want crit chance on her, you want crit damage. So you see what I did with her, crit damage HP. So, and the reason I did HP on her, her 60 here, HP re restore 30% HP if the caster's turn is below, or HP rather is below 30 at the end of the turn. Well, the higher her HP is, the more that that passive is going to restore, the more total health she's going to get. So that's why I gave her HP versus defense. In that occasion, because there's often times I have her on uh, boss dungeons where it's just like the boss can't kill her until he rages up a certain point because even though he gets her low, she keeps healing and she gets those extra couple turns so she's able to do more damage for the boss before she gets killed. And same thing in PvP, you know, gonna help keep her up. You, get, you gotta really like go through the skill set and be thinking like, okay. You know, what would go good with this, what would go good with this, etc, etc. But in general, for your attack characters, attack speed, attack percentage, crit chance, get them some HP increase. Uh, and then, you know, depending on the hero, multi-strike, crit damage, counter-strike. Like, counter-strike's really good on Ellie. 
Uh, Multi-strike, like I just showed you, really good on Tayo. Crit damage, really good on Ezna. Crit chance, really good on Saya, etc. You really gotta in invest in your hero stats and look at them. For your defensive heroes and your support heroes, attack speed's really good. The more, they're, the more their turns are going, the more healing they're getting, the more their cooldowns are refreshing. Uh, the more the, your defensive heroes are taunting, have chances to taunt, etc. And uh, defensive and support heroes, usually you want to build them pretty tanky. So get them those two set defense, get them those two set HP, get them uh, maybe counter, depending on the the thing, whatever you're going for. and You know, just in general, those are some sub bonuses you probably want to do. I think I've pretty much covered most everything. I'm trying to think if there's anything I've missed. Uh, let me take a quick look. Yeah, I think I covered... Yeah, I covered most everything. If there's anything I missed, guys, let me know. I'll be happy to answer stuff in the comments. Uh... And then, yeah, also... Oh, oh, there is one thing I missed. So... All the extra runes that you don't normally get, you can click this question mark on the on the screen, and you can get an explanation of what every rune does. All the ones with the green lightning, these are the ones that are you either buy them from the PvP shop, you buy them from the laboratory in the town, or you just can't buy them anywhere, and you have to get lucky with like a rune selector or a rune six star drop or random ticket or whatever the hell. But, you know, they got some really crazy stuff here. A lot of these are, like, at the beginning of waves or decreased cooldowns or whatever. So, like, this right here, you know, as far as I know, I'm not sure if you can get Rune of Frenzy. I don't think you... You probably can, actually. But maybe you can. I'm not sure. But 100% chance to decrease cooldowns for all skills by one turn when killing an enemy using skill one. Ayo. You know, or someone that, like, they just, like, go. They just instantly go Morgan. Skill 1, Morgan, or, uh... I don't know, I mean, there's different heroes you could probably think of with this. But, you know, really hard-hitting heroes that hit with their 1 a lot. Kane. Kane, that would be pretty good on. That's something to consider. Especially considering it's a 2 set. So... Runa Burst, obviously, like I said before. Ashley, maybe Morgan. Someone who keeps consistent dots up. 30% additional damage if target is under abnormal status. Jacqueline. Someone who puts up lots of debuffs. Or if you run a team with lots of debuffs, you know. Eh, what else? Uh, single target damage taken. Yeah, so if you got someone that's always focused, like uh, Morrigan. You know, Esna usually finds Morrigan the first turn. Morrigan usually finds Ruby or some other grass hero. Or grass hero. There I go again, Pokemon. Uh, Wind Hero. You know, like Ramu. Morgan will usually go on Ramu. Eh, consider getting him this. Maybe that'll help him survive that first turn. And stuff like that, you know, just stuff to think about. And yeah, that's the last thing I can think of, guys. So I'm sure as I figure, figure out more, I'll come back. But yeah, so this has been your Rune Guide video. I'm Showtime DR on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Showtime DR. Uh, I'll be putting out one more video today, and then there's two others I already recorded, so. And yeah, in the in the notes, you can go come, you know, there's a link to my Twitch, link to the Discord. Uh, I gotta try to link Mass video, I'll try to remember that when I'm posting this. And, you yeah, know, follow me if you feel like it, yada yada yada, so. <laughs> I am such a salesman and a shuckster and a jiver. Yo! I'm shucking, I'm driving, pay me money, follow me, do all this stuff, get me lots of free. Eh, whatever. If you like my videos, I hope I bring a smile to your face. I hope I'm informative. That's my goal, is just be entertaining, be informative, everything else is whatever. So, you like me, you hate me. If I'm helping you, that's all I want, so. Take care, guys. Peace out.